uh, we have pod Q polynomial graphs and the positive uh, part of UQ plus of UQ of SL2. Okay, uh, delighted to be here and thank you for showing up. Uh, right, so the title is Q polynomial graphs and the positive part UQ plus of UQSL2 hat. Okay, now what's this about? So we're gonna first review how the subconstituent algebra, also known as the Terwilliger algebra of a Q polynomial graph is related to a tridiagonal algebra. And then we're gonna examine a particular tridiagonal algebra called the positive part UQ plus of the quantum group UQSL2 hat. And for UQ plus, we're gonna describe the Damiani PBW basis, the Beck PBW basis and the alternating PBW basis. And then we're gonna discuss how those PBW bases are related to each other. And we're gonna give these PBW bases in closed form uh, using a Q shuffle algebra. And then we'll finish with an open problem. Okay, so to get started, let gamma be a finite undirected connected graph without loops or multiple edges with vertex set X and edge set E. And vertices X and Y will be adjacent whenever they form an edge. Now the, mat, the algebra at mat XC consists of the square matrices with rows and columns indexed by X and all entries in C. And the vector space V, CX, consists of the column vectors with coordinates indexed by X and all entries in C. Okay, and of course that mat matrix algebra mat XC acts on V by left multiplication. Okay, now let's recall the adjacency matrix of gamma. Define A in, in MAT with XY entry one, if X and Y are adjacent and zero otherwise for any vertices X and Y. So that A is the adjacency matrix of the graph. It's symmetric with all entries real, so A is diagonalizable. Okay, next let's discuss the adjacency algebra, M I'll call it. So M is the subalgebra of MAT generated by A. It's finite dimensional, commutative, and semi-simple. And it's got a basis, EI, I zero to D, such that for every I and J zero to D, EI times EJ is the Kronecker delta IJ EI. And also the identity is the sum of the EIs. So we'll call those EIs the primitive idempotents of M or gamma. Okay, next let's discuss the dual adjacency algebras of gamma. We'll be referring to the path length distance function partial. So from now on, fix a vertex. Tanabe, uh, Hajimi called, called it a marked vertex. Okay, a vertex X. Um, define capital D, D of X, to be the maximum distance from X to any vertex in the graph. Okay, now for I zero to capital D, define a diagonal matrix EI star in MAT with YY entry one, if uh, the distance from X to Y is I, and zero otherwise. This is for every vertex Y in the graph. And by construction, for I and J zero to capital D, EI star times EJ star is delta IJ EI star, and the identity is the sum of the EI stars. Okay, now those matrices EI star, I zero to D form a basis for a subalgebra M star, M star of X of mat XC. And that algebra M star, it's commutative and semi-simple, and we'll call it the dual adjacency algebra of gamma with respect to X, the, the fixed base vertex. 
Okay, in ID2, I define T, T of X, to be the subalgebra of matrix E generated by both M and M star. That's the subconstituent algebra of gamma with respect to X. Okay, just by the construction, it's finite dimensional and semi simple, but not commutative in general. Let me run through three examples. For an integer n at least three, the complete graph Kn has n vertices with any two vertices adjacent. And with respect to any vertex of Kn, T is isomorphic to a direct sum of a two by two full matrix algebra and a copy of the, the ground field, the complex numbers. So in this case, the dimension of T is five. Next example, cycle. For, for n at least three, we'll view the n cycle as a graph. And it turns out that with respect to any vertex of, of uh, that n cycle, Cn, T is described as follows, depending on the parity of n. If n is even, uh, equal to 2r, then T is isomorphic to a direct sum of uh, two matrix algebras with ranks r plus 1 and r minus 1. And if n is odd, 2r plus 1, again, t is isomorphic to a uh, direct sum of two full matrix algebras, but this time with ranks r plus 1 and r. OK, one more example, the hypercubes. For any uh, integer n at least 2, the hypercube hn2 has vertex set consisting of the n tuples of uh, ones and minus ones with two vertices x and y adjacent whenever they differ in exactly one coordinate. And with respect to any vertex of that hypercube, uh, T is isomorphic to a um, direct sum of full matrix algebras with ranks n plus 1, n minus 1, n minus 3, n minus 5, all the way down. OK, from now on, let's assume that gamma is arbitrary. Now, since T is semi-simple, the vector space V decomposes into a direct sum of irreducible T modules. And it's a classical question, what does that decomposition of V into irreducible T modules tell us about the combinatorics of the graph? So you can ask this, this question, or, you know, so consider this problem for any graph. Uh, classically, we assume the graph is distance regular, but even that is not um, essential. Okay, anyway, we're going to impose an assumption on our graph that, that's going to make the subconstituent algebra very nice. To motivate the assumption, let me make an observation about M and M star. Those algebras are related in the following way. For i and j 0 to capital D, the triple product EI star A E J star is zero if i and j differ by more than one and, and non-zero if they differ by exactly one. Okay, this, this is just the triangle inequality for that distance function in disguise. Okay, now let's interchange the roles of m and m star. By a dual adjacency matrix with respect to x, we mean a matrix a star, I'll call it, in m star, says that for i and j 0 to d, the triple product ei a star ej is 0 if i and j differ by more than 1, and non-zero if they differ by exactly 1. OK, now we'll say that the graph is q polynomial with respect to x whenever gamma has a dual adjacency matrix a star with respect to x. For example, the complete graphs, the cycles, and the hypercubes, they are all Q polynomial with respect to every vertex. OK, now that Q polynomial property has the following consequence. I proved uh, back in 93, or at least paraphrasing what I proved, uh, if we assume that gamma is Q polynomial with respect to x, then there exists some scalars, beta, gamma, gamma star, delta, delta star, such that the adjacency matrix A and the, a du the dual adjacency matrix A star satisfy the two equations that you see there. 
okay, cubic in one um, of the two and linear in the other. Okay, those equations are the so-called tridiagonal relations. And those are the defining relations for the tridiagonal algebra. For example, if beta was two, and gamma, gamma star, rho, rho, or gamma, gamma star are zero and rho, rho star are four, those tridiagonal relations become the famous Q, dolan grady relations uh, that read, as you see there, the triple commutator, A, 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 A star is four times the commutator of A and A star, and the same with A and A star interchanged. Okay, those dolan grady relations are the defining relations for the ansager lee algebra, famous algebra from physics. Next example, suppose that beta has the form q squared plus q to the minus two, and the other parameters are all zero, gamma, gamma star, delta, delta star. Okay, in that case, the tridiagonal relations become the q ser relations. As you see there, the uh, bringing in a Q commutator, um, the, the uh, triple commutator A, 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 A star sub Q, Q inverse and plane is equal to zero. And the same with A and A star interchanged. Okay, those Q star relations are the defining relations for the positive part, UQ plus, of the quantum group UQSL2 hat. Okay, one more example for now. Um, if beta is of the form q squared plus q to the minus two, the gamma gamma star are zero, and the uh, delta delta star are minus q squared minus q to the minus two squared, those triangle relations become the q dolan grady relations, as you see there. The triple commutator a, 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 a star sub q, q inverse and plane, is equal to this scalar multiple of the commutator of A star and A, and same with A and A star interchange. Okay, those Q dolan grady relations, those are the defining relations for the Q on Sager algebra, OQ. Okay, now the preceding slides indicate how tridiagonal algebras are related to Q polynomial graphs. So this relationship motivates us to understand tridiagonal algebras in a comprehensive way. And as a first step towards this understanding, we seek a nice basis for a given tridiagonal algebra. And this is a non-trivial problem because these tridiagonal algebras are infinite dimensional. Anyway, we'll take this step for the algebra UQ plus. Okay, so for the rest of the talk, I'm going to focus on UQ plus, and we're going to be considering these bases. Let me clarify the notation. Uh, the natural numbers n consist of 0, 1, 2, etc. And from now on, every vector space discussed is over the complex numbers. And from now on, every algebra discussed is associative over the complex numbers and has a multiplicative identity. Now, I mentioned PW, PBW bases. Let me clarify what that means. Let, let A be an algebra, script A be an algebra. Um, I'm going to discuss a type of basis called a poincare burkhoff witt or PBW basis. Okay, this consists of a subset omega of script A and a linear order on omega, such that the following is a linear basis for the vector space A the set of products, a1, a2 out to an, okay, and a natural number, where the ai's are from omega in order. From now on, let me fix a non-zero q, scalar q, that's not a root of unity. And let's recall the, the notation bracket m sub q, which is given by q to the n minus q to the minus n over q minus q inverse. Okay, so let's just sharpen up the, the meaning of uq plus. I'm going to define the algebra uq plus by generators a and b. I was using the notation a and a star earlier. Um, let me use a and b for now. 
Okay, and the relations, those QCR relations that we saw earlier. Okay, that UQ plus, that's the positive part of UQSL2 hat. Okay, now in 93, Ilya Damiani obtained a PBW basis for UQ plus involving, whoops, in, involving some elements um, denoted E sub N delta plus alpha naught, okay, N zero to infinity, E N delta plus alpha one, N zero to infinity, and E N delta N one to infinity. Okay, those subscripts look a little complicated. Those represent roots in a certain affine Lie algebra. We don't have to get into that. It's just some, some uh, way to index the, the entries for us. Okay, anyway, now these elements are recursively defined in the following way. The E alpha naught is A, the generator A. The E alpha one is the B. The E delta, E1 delta is Q to the minus 2BA minus AB, so essentially this a Q commutator. Okay, and then for N at least one, En delta plus alpha naught is the commutator of e, e delta and the En minus one delta plus alpha naught, okay, up to a scalar. And then the En delta plus alpha one is uh, similarly as a um, commutator involving the En minus one delta plus alpha one and the E delta up to a scalar. Okay, and then the En delta at the bottom is Q to the minus two, E n minus one delta plus alpha one a minus a e n minus one delta plus alpha one. So up to a scalar, a, a Q commutator. Okay. Anyway, so recursively we define these uh, these PBW basis elements. Okay, and then it was the the big theorem of Damiani uh, that they actually do form a PBW basis. A PBW basis for UQ plus is obtained by those elements in this, the linear order that you see there. The first series is in the, the given order, followed by the, the last series in, in the given order, followed by the middle series in inverted order. Okay, and also those En deltas and N1 to infinity from the last series, those mutually commute. Okay, that's what she proved. Okay, now those PBW basis elements are defined recursively. And next we're gonna describe these elements in closed form using a Q shuffle algebra. And for this Q shuffle algebra, the underlying vector space is a free algebra on two generators. And this free algebra is described on the next slide. Okay, so the free algebra, which I'll call bold V, uh, looks as follows. Let's start with uh, X and Y, two non-commuting indeterminates. Okay, let bold V be the free algebra with generators X and Y. By a letter in V, I just mean X or Y. And for a natural number N, a word of length N in V, is a product of letters, V1, V2, up to Vn. Okay, free algebra just means there are no relations in the algebra, no relations amongst the X and the Y. Okay, anyway, the vector space V has a basis, an ordinary linear basis consisting of its words, and this basis is called standard. Now, we just defined the free algebra V. There's another algebra structure on V called the Q-shuffle algebra, and this was due to Mark Rose 95. Okay, that the Q-shuffle product will be denoted by star. Okay, it goes like this. Let's start with a special case where we multiply two letters, U and V. So by definition, U star V is the, can, the free product uv plus the free product vu times a power of q, the power being two or minus two, depending on whether u and v are the same or not. Okay, so for example, x star y, 
is xy plus q to the minus 2yx. Or x star x is, is xx plus q squared xx, etc. Okay, now suppose you've got two words, u and v. Let's describe u star v. Okay, the u, it's a product of letters a1, a2 out to ar. And the v is a, also a product of letters b1, b2 out to bx. And just to illustrate, let's assume that r and s are both two. Okay, then by definition, u star v is, a, is gonna be a linear combination of six terms in this case, where the terms are obtained by shuffling the a's into the b's in all possible ways. And for every shuffle, where whenever you pull an a past a b, you introduce a, a power of uh, q, q squared or q to the minus two, depending on whether the, the a and the b that you swapped are the same or not. Okay. All right, and then it's the big theorem of Rosa from 95 that that Q shuffle product star uh, turns the vector space V into a, an algebra. Okay, now let uh, capital U be the subalgebra of the Q shuffle algebra V generated by the X and the Y. Now that U, it's not actually equal to bold V itself. Um, let me clarify this point. So, you know, bold V as a free algebra is by definition generated by the X and the Y. But bold V as a Q shuffle algebra is not actually generated by the X and the Y. And for that reason, we consider the subalgebra U uh, that, it, that is generated by the X and the Y. Okay, we're interested in the U. Now, let me describe it. It turns out that with respect to the Q shuffle product, the X and the Y satisfy the equations that you see there. And those equations, uh, which involve the, the Q shuffle product, like I mentioned, th that's the expanded form for the Q ser relations. Okay, so in the Q shuffle algebra, V, those elements X and Y satisfy the Q ser relations. Okay, consequently, there's an algebra homomorphism, I'll call it the natural map, from UQ plus to the Q shuffle algebra V that sends the A to the X and the B to the Y. And by construction, that natural map has, has image U. Okay, and it was a big theorem of Rosa, 95, that that natural map from UQ plus to U is an algebra isomorphism. Okay, so that U, that's a copy of UQ plus sitting inside the Q shuffle algebra V. Okay, so what we're going to do next is describe how the map natural acts on the Damiani PBW basis for UQ plus. Okay, the, the description involves the so-called Catalan words in, in bold V. Let me explain what that's about. So we've got our two generators, X and Y. I'm gonna give them a weight. Uh, X bar, the weight of X will be one, and Y bar will be minus one. Okay, now let's take any word, V1, V2 out to Vn in bold V. We'll call that word Catalan whenever the partial sums of the weights, V1 bar plus V2 bar up to VI bar, is non-negative for i1 to n minus 1 and 0 for i equals n. So in this case, uh, the n has to be even. So for example, for n 0 to 3, I'm listing the Catalan words of length 2n there. For n equals 0, um, you just have the identity, 1, OK. For n equals 1, the Catalan word, word of length 2n, there's just one of them, x, y. For n equals two, the Catalan words of length four are x, y, x, y, and x, x, y, y. 
Okay, and for n equals three, Catalan words of length six, you got five of them as you see there at the bottom. The number of Catalan words of length two n is equal to the nth Catalan number. <clears throat> okay. All right. Oops. Okay, now let me um, introduce a, um, an element CN. For every N uh, in N, let me define CN to be a, a big sum involving B1, a word V1, V2 out to V2N times this product of Q integers, uh, brackets one sub Q, brackets one plus V1 bar sub Q, brackets one plus V1 bar plus V2 bar sub Q, et cetera, all the way out to the end. Okay, where that sum is over all the Catalan words V1, V2 up to V2N that have length 2N. Okay, for example, uh, the C naught is just one. C1 is uh, brackets two XY. C2 is uh, that given linear combination of the the two Catalan words of length two, the x, y, x, y, and the x, x, y, y. Okay, and the C3 is given at the bottom there. Okay, so now I'm ready to describe the, uh, the, 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 the Damiani PBW basis elements in closed form. Okay, so I showed in 2018 that that natural map sends E n delta plus alpha naught to a scalar multiple of xcn. So that, that is the concatenation product of x and cn. Okay, and the scalar is q to the minus 2n, q minus q inverse to the 2n. And natural also sends the en delta plus alpha 1 to the same scalar multiple of the concatenation product cn1. Okay, and then also uh, natural sends the en delta to a scalar multiple of Cn, the scalar being minus Q to the minus 2n, Q minus Q inverse to the 2n minus 1. Okay, now we mentioned earlier that those En deltas mutually commute. And as a corollary, these the Cs, the Cns uh, mutually commute. So Ci star Cj is Cj star Ci. Okay, now I just described the Damiani PBW basis for UQ plus. So next I'm gonna describe a variation on this PBW basis due to Jonathan Beck in, in 94. It involves the exponential function, which we uh, recall at the bottom there. Okay, and it goes like this, let T be an indeterminate. And I'm going to define the elements um, e, EK delta of type Beck, okay, so super Beck, um, K1 to infinity. This is an element in UQ plus, okay, defined by this generating function. And you see at the bottom here, the exponential of this big uh, power series involving the EK delta Becks, okay, is equal to this. Uh, this power series involving the original EK deltas from Damiani. Okay, so you know, comparing coefficients, what this is saying is that the EK delta backs are certain uh, homogeneous polynomials of degree total degree K in the original EK deltas, and and vice versa. The EK deltas are homogeneous polynomials in the in degree K of the in in terms of the EK delta backs. Okay, anyway, so it's Beck's theorem that the uh, PBW basis for UQ plus is obtained by the elements, uh, the EN delta plus alpha naught from the original Damiani construction, the EN delta plus alpha one, and then these uh, EN delta uh, of type Beck, okay, they form a PBW basis in the, the same ordering as before. The first series is in the normal order followed by the, the third series 
in normal order and then the second the middle series in inverted order okay and then i just just proved this summer uh, that that same natural map sends the uh, back version of the en deltas to a scalar multiple of the free product x c n minus one y <clears throat> Okay, so both the Damiani uh, PBW basis and the Beck uh, variation can be expressed in closed form uh, using this, uh, this, this catalyst element, the, C, the CN um, sum in, uh, inside the, this Q shuffle algebra. Okay, very striking result in my view. Okay, so a corollary of that result on the previous slide is that the um, the Beck version of the um, the en deltas and the original version of the en deltas, when translated into the uh, the Cadillac formulation, uh, looks as you see there. The exponential of this generating function involving that the, that free product x c k minus one y on one side is equal to the generating function for this the c k's on the other. Okay, let me emphasize the exponential is, is calculated with respect to the Q shuffle product, while the X C K minus one Y, that is calculated with respect to the free product. Okay, so the interesting interplay between the, the Q shuffle product and the free product going on here. Okay, now I just described the, the Beck BBW basis for UQ plus. And surely I'm going to bring in another PBW basis for UQ plus said to be alternating. Okay, let me back up a little bit. Uh, I'm going to describe uh, a type of element in UQ plus said to be alternating. And as it turns out, every alternating element commutes with exactly one of the A, the B, the Q commutator of A and B and A and the Q commutator of A and B. So that gives four types of alternating elements, which will be denoted by W minus K, WK plus one, GK plus one, and GK plus one tilde, where the K is any natural number. Okay, and it turns out that the alternating elements of each type mutually commute. Okay, so now I'm going to describe or define the alternating elements of UQ plus. And to reach this goal, I'm going to first define an alternating word in the free algebra V. So a word V1, V2 out to Vn in V is said to be alternating whenever the n is at least one and Vi minus one is not equal to Vi for I2 to n. So an alternating word has the general form, da, 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 you know, x, x, y, x, y, back and forth throughout. Okay, but there are several types depending on how you start and end. So you might start with an x and end with an x. So you have x or x, y, x or x, y, x, y, x, et cetera. Or you might start and end with a y, y or y, x, y, et cetera. Or you might start with a y and end with an x, or you might start with an x and end with the y. So that gives four types of alternating words. Okay, now I proved um, as part of this whole project that the alternating words are in V are actually contained in the U, that subalgebra generated by the x and the y. Okay, now recalling Rosso's uh, algebra isomorphism natural, we define an alternating element in UQ plus to be the natural pre-image of an alternating word in bold V. Okay, and now the four types of alternating elements are defined as follows. The, the natural map sends the the W naught to the X, the W minus one to the X, Y, X, W minus two to the X, Y, X, Y, X, et cetera. OK, 
Okay, and then the W1, 2, 3, et cetera, are attached to the second series of alternating elements. And the G1, G2, G3 are attached to the third series, and the G tones are attached to the fourth series. Okay, now my next goal is to describe the relations between the alternating elements of UQ+. And as we'll see, there are three types of relations. Now for notational convenience, let me define G naught to be one and G naught tilde to be one. Okay, so these alternating elements satisfy a whole slew of um, very attractive relations. Here's the first type. Uh, for every natural number K, uh, the commutator of W naught and WK plus one is equal to the commutator of W minus K and W one, which in turn is equal to the scalar multiple of GK plus one tilde minus GK plus one. Okay, and then some relations involving the Q commutator. Okay, this sort of thing. And then for the type uh, two relations, uh, we bring in two natural numbers, K and L, and the relations say that the um, first one says that the W minus K, W uh, minus L commute, the WK plus one, WL plus one commute. Okay, and a whole slew of relations of this general sort. Okay, and then the type three relations are of a somewhat different nature in, um, involving quadratic polynomials on either side. Uh, first one reads sum over k zero to n, gk times gn minus k tilde times q to the n minus two k is equal to q times a, a similar sum of products involving the w's. Okay, anyway, a whole slew of attractive relations. Now, using those relations of the three types, we can recursively express each alternating element of UQ plus as a polynomial in the A and the B. And let me give some details on the next slide. So it goes like this, using the equations below, the alternating elements of UQ plus are recursively obtained from A and B in the following order, the W naught, W1, G1, G1 tilde, W minus one, W2, et cetera, where W naught is A, W1 is B, and then for N at least one, GN is given by that, that big expression you see there. And then the, G, the GN tilde is given by GN plus a commutator, W minus N, uh, given by some Q commutator up to a scalar and W N plus one given by a Q commutator. Okay, so slightly complicated, but anyway, you can recursively solve for all the alternating elements in terms of the A and the B. Okay, and then I, I proved in 2018 that um, a PBW basis for UQ plus is obtained by these alternating elements, not all of them actually, but uh, we take three out of the four series, the W minus I, uh, G tilde, uh, J plus one, and the W, K plus one. Those form a base, a PBW basis in any linear order that satisfies the requirement at the bottom there. We, we uh, run through the W minus I's first, followed by the G tilde's, followed by the, the W, K plus one. Okay, now, uh, we consider how the those Catalan elements, the CN and the GN tilde are related. So for notational convenience, let me define or identify now the UQ plus with the U via the isomorphism natural. Okay, so in my present notation, G naught tilde is one, G1 tilde is equal to XY, G2 tilde is equal to XY, XY, et cetera. Okay, so I'm going to be explaining how the CNs are related to the GN tildes. And this explanation is going to involve generating functions. So let me bring in generating functions uh, in an in indeterminate T. C of T will be the sum over N, zero to infinity of CN T to the N, and G tilde of T will be the sum over N, zero to infinity, GN tilde T to the N. 
Okay, so a few years back, I showed that G tilde of QT, uh, Q shuffle product, C of minus T, Q shuffle product, G tilde of Q inverse T is equal to the identity. Okay, and if you unpack that and compare coefficients, you find it's saying that for every positive N, G N tilde is given by that sum of products there involving the uh, the, the smaller ci and, and smaller g tildes, so to speak. Okay, and you can also solve for the cns in terms of the, the smaller c's and, and g tildes. Okay, now we're going to describe how the elements g tilde n and the, uh, the xcn minus 1 y's are related. Okay, remember the xcn minus 1 y's are the uh, the, the products in, associated with the Beck version of the, the PBW basis. Okay, so I just uh, proved this summer that the exponential of the that generating function you see in the middle there involving the x ck minus 1 y, okay, is equal to the g tilde of t. Okay, where I emphasize once more that the exponential is with respect to the Q shuffle product and the X CK minus one Y is with respect to the free product. Okay, so this equation uh, shows us, roughly speaking, how, how the GK tildes uh, can be computed in terms of the, the X, X CK minus one Ys in, well, not quite a closed form, but at least the generating function uh, has a closed form. Okay. Okay, now at the beginning of the talk, I motivated the UQ plus using the Q polynomial graphs. And so now I give an open problem. For the Q polynomial graphs associated with UQ plus, find the combinatorial meaning of the PBW basis elements for the Damiani PBW basis, the Beck PBW basis, and the alternating PBW basis. These PBW basis elements are so nice algebraically that surely they have some nice combinatorial meaning. Okay, so in summary, so we first showed how the subconstituent algebra of a Q polynomial graph is related to a tridiagonal algebra. So we then examined the particular tridiagonal algebra called the positive part, UQ plus, of the quantum group UQSL2 hat. And for UQ plus, uh, we described the Damiani PBW basis, the Beck PBW basis, and the alternating PBW basis. And we described how these PBW basis elements are related to each other. We also gave these PBW bases in closed form using a Q shuffle algebra. And then we finished with an open problem. So thank you for your attention. Thank you. Are there any questions for Paul? I'm always good at naive questions. Okay. So, uh, so Paul, for those of us who, who can't get our head around UQSL2 hat, can you tell us some of the um, some of the quotient algebras or, or subalgebras that it contains? It's a fairly um, large object, right? Or does it have natural quotients that are that are the algebras that we know about? Well, quotient. Well, anytime you take a representation, you're effectively uh, mapping the the algebra into a, uh, an endomorphism algebra for the you know, vector space if, if that representation is finite dimensional then the uh, the homomorphism involved is uh, you know, it's got a, a non-trivial kernel so you got a non-trivial quotient uh, <clears throat> so you know representation theory for uh, for uqsl2 hat is a very uh, beautiful but involved topic. Um, there's a famous paper by Chari and Presley that, that classifies up to isomorphism the, 
finite dimensional irreducible modules for UQSL2 hat. Uh, Subalgebras, there's, um, if you're familiar with Lie theory generally, for a finite dimensional semi simple Lie algebra, you've got this triang so called triangular decomposition into the positive part, the uh, the, uh, the Cartan subalgebra part, the H is what it's usually called, and the negative part. So N, N plus H and N minus is the way it's uh, usually depicted at the, the Lie theory level. Okay, at the uh, quantum group level, um, we are effectively looking at a Q deformation of the universal enveloping algebra for the Lie algebra. And the, um, uh, the, the Q deformation of the N plus, the positive part, becomes the, the UQ plus that I'm talking about here. Um, and um, the direct, at the level of the Lie algebra, you've got the, you know, the direct, the algebra is the direct sum of the N plus, the H, and the N minus. At the level of the quantum group, the direct sum becomes a tensor product. So the UQSL2 hat becomes isomorphic to the tensor product of the UQ plus. The, okay, so Q, Q analog of, or Q deformation of the, the N plus, and then a, a K, K part, so the Q deformation of the H, and then UQ minus, the Q deformation of the, of the, uh, uh, the N, N minus. Do we know for which integers n there's an the, the um, there's an onto map on GLN that it maps onto GLN? Is that for all n? It maps onto GLN. For all, for all n? Uh, well, at any any time you have a an irreducible finite dimensional representation. Um, right, that's, that's what I'm asking. Is that, is that are there are there tons of those or are they fairly sparse among the positive integers? Well, that, well there, there, there are tons of them. So uh, the, the way the theory works, you, you've got a very special type of uh, irreducible module called an evaluation module. And this can have arbitrary dimension, arbitrary positive dimension. Okay, and then the general finite dimensional irreducible modules are essentially arbitrary. There's a condition, technical condition, but basically arbitrary tensor product of evaluation modules. So you take, um, so if you wanna, you know, you're, you're given your dimension and you wanna construct an irreducible module for UQ SL2 hat of that dimension. So what you would do is take, take your dimension, let's just call it N, uh, factor it into the prime factorization, okay? For every prime, um, can, there's going to be a, an evaluation module of dimension equal to that prime. And then you take the tensor product of those evaluation modules and you're going to end up with uh, a module for the UQSL2 hat with dimension N. And there are multiple ways uh, I mean, there, there are some free parameters floating around. So there's up to isomorphism, there are going to be multiple uh, irreducible uh, UQSL2 hat modules with uh, any given dimension n. Okay, th that just helps me understand how big it is. Thank you. Yeah. So the theory, it's, it's roughly analogous to uh, the uh, representation theory for SL2. Uh, you also have a question in the chat. How was the subalgebra U defined? The U, the U is the subalgebra of the Q shuffle algebra V generated by the X and the Y. Um, let me remind everybody that at the free algebra level, bold V is the free algebra generated by the X and the Y. So uh, it's got a basis consisting of all the words in X and Y. 
Okay, but if we replace the free product by the Q shuffle product, it's no longer true that the bold V is generated by the X and the Y. Um, with respect to the Q shuffle product, the X and the Y generate this sub, subspace, which I'm calling, or sub algebra, which I'm calling U. And it turns out that U, you know, viewed as a sub algebra of the Q shuffle algebra is isomorphic to the UQ plus. If there are no more questions, let's thank Paul again.